Hello to those watching this channel. If you find these videos informative and would like to see more, please remember to click on the like button. Also share it with other believers, especially those who feel like they've had enough of this world. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel so YouTube will more probably recommend it to other watchers searching for end time information. And if you like to know when another video is released, then click on the bell button so you'll be notified when the video is released. I know when it comes to speakers, I'm probably one of the worst on YouTube. I will try to improve the presentation, like sit still and leave my itches alone. I'm doing what I feel God has asked me to do, as far out as that may sound. When I speak, I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulders. So I'm hoping that someone will benefit. Jesus loves this, and we can see the evidence of this more and more while we seek out his word. This series is meant to remove the mystery around his return and our soon escape. Some of what I have to say has never been said before, and I know it. Information in his word is directed to us, and I would like us to ponder and reason on it. I hope this contribution will deepen your interest in his coming and our soon departure. Amen. Hello again, dear fellow believers. In this video, I'd like to discuss the fifth seal. Um, not much has been said about the fifth seal and what occurs and why is said what is said. And if anyone, I'm sure, has taken the time, I certainly haven't seen any evidence or any teaching on, on the fifth seal and what in fact happens. Most of the seals in Revelation or the events, the trumpets and the via seven vials, when they are poured out or the trumpet is blown or the seal is broken, something nasty happens on earth. A judgment takes place. This seal is different. Um, and I'd like to just bring our attention to the fact that at this seal, there is no devastation on the earth. It simply is um, an event in heaven. John, over three verses, speaks about an event in heaven. And nothing is actually mentioned on earth except as to what had happened back down on earth. Um, so... In this video, it might be a bit shorter than the rest. We're going to cover um, what the first seal, what happens or occurs during the first seal, when the first seal is open, and how the and how this information that is gotten from this event can be useful for us as believers. So I'm going to refer to my trusty little scripture here. Yeah? I'm using e-sword, and uh, I've got it nice and bold because the eyesight is not where it used to be. And uh, and from we're gonna read from verse nine, uh, chapter seven, Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, this is the Lamb. Notice also that the verse starts with "and," which means it's the bullwhip of what happened on the fourth seal. And if you can remember the pale horse, the pale horse that was released and the rider on it was named um, Death and Hell followed in suit. I just want to mention something about the, the, the fourth seal and the, the picture I, I see in my mind when I see this is this 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 horse being released or unleashed onto the earth, which actually is war, and and uh, death is um, is finding that the harvest is plentiful, especially during war. And if you can imagine a combine harvester going into a field, a farmer's combine harvester, and he's got his he's he's got his uh, Forks or into the uh, into the uh, harvest, and and he normally drags behind him a hopper. All right. So as this harvester goes through the field, harvesting uh, corn or maize, um, corn or wheat, 
it plucks it plucks the wheat from the, it, it plucks the 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 uh, food part the edible part and then dispenses of it into a hopper um so i get this picture that year is death death is the harvester and it's plucking souls out of bodies right and this is what's happening during war and it's dispensing with them into a hopper which is called hell um ultimately this this would be their destination it's it's a it's a great pity um that this is actually what happened during this during this event because um nothing is said about souls that that did not go to hell that were not harvested into hell but it's very sad and i think if if you think about it that is that on the fourth seal is actually a victory for satan uh, um that on that during that period he would have had majority of the harvest and we like to think about of loved ones that may have uh, you know you know given their lives for our freedoms for 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 the life we have today and most of them went to hell that is sad anyway we carrying on with the fifth harvest now as I mentioned, the fifth harvest starts with ants, so it's a buildup from the fourth seal. It's it's it you cannot place this in anywhere else. So it becomes after the fourth seal, which is the fifth seal, which is obviously logical. And I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Alright, so now we see there are John sees souls, not bodies. He actually could identify them as souls. I'm not too sure what a soul would look like, um, probably like the person, but he was certain that these were not the bodies. And we know that they were souls, they were not bodies, because their bodies must have still been on earth or whatever happened to them. Um, they were alive, alive and well under the altar. Um, I asked myself the question, why would souls be kept under the altar? Especially those who gave their their lives for for the word of God or and we'll discuss what exactly they must have given their lives for or may made the ultimate sacrifice. Well the altar is a place of sacrifice, if you think about it. That's where that's where animals in in, in in the temple um, down earth, that is where the sacrifice was made, and and you would probably think it fitting that maybe these saints who were under the altar, they were they were, well, they weren't on the altar, but under the altar, well, they had a position, probably because they had made the ultimate sacrifice. They were the ultimate sacrifice. They they could not have given any more than their whole than their life. So. I don't know how big this space would be. I probably think something like a, maybe as the size of a. This is heaven now, so probably the size of a of a, a soccer stadium. That it was like a, a waiting room, and um, these souls are in a in like a halfway house, and of course they they're not in their bodies, and and they they've been there some time. We know they've been there some time because. They um, in in the next verse they cried out and were and were they cried uh, they cried out with a loud voice saying how long O Lord how long you know um, ever ever wonder if ever any of you had a took a long road trip <laughs> and you know, kids in the back seat how long when I'll be there yet you know this is like this is you get the impression. From that uh, question, is that, oh, you know, we've been here forever, you know, is there any way we can actually get out of here? And um, so they are, they are becoming impatient. And now, think about the argument that these are souls that were killed in the tribulation. If the tribulation is seven years, which we, which we know it is, 
in, and we're in the tribulation is that they've already been there, really, in, in God terms, they've been there a couple of seconds, you know, but uh, these, these saints complain they've been there for a while. Well, I think it's probably safe to assume that they probably were there before the first seal was opened, before the war happened. Now, if you think about this back, if if if, if uh, saints are are believing that the war is in that the war is still going to happen, all right, we know, and that would be that would kick off the 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 revelations sign or the or, or the great revelation a war, and we're waiting for a third world war. Well, if that does happen, then and those saints have died. Um, because during the tribulation, well, and by the end of the tribulation, they're really just being there seven years. You know, that's hardly any amount of time in God's time. We know that according to the word of God, is that uh, to God a day is like a thousand years on earth, you know, and a thousand years would probably be a few seconds in heaven. So, you know, we will all probably move at the same speed there when when, when we're there. And uh, we'll say, you know, we 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 only been here a few minutes, and ten thousand years have passed on Earth. But um, um, yeah, so that does give rise to the thought: is that if they had been there a long time, or they feel they've been there a long time, let's say maybe from the beginning of time, when you know when God first uh, created man, that there were there were people that had died for the word's sake. Let's define for the word's sake. Right. First of all, I heard this verse before, as these people were guillotined, they had lost their heads. Right, so that's not true. Right, it's not true. Um, people are probably beheaded during the Great Tribulation, but as a saint, we're not here. So, all those saints who are you know, wondering if your neck is going to stay in it, you don't have to worry about that. We're not going to go through that. Um, but these saints nevertheless gave their lives. So specifically, what saints would they be? Well, they were um, guilty for the word of God, for the word of God. And remember, there's a word and again, for the testimony which they held. So they were preaching, they were saying things, right? So if you think about it, you kind of think, well, they were obviously saying what it was in the Word of God. Not so, not so. They were, um, they were slain for the Word and what they were saying at the time. And most of these people think about it. Jesus, Jesus told a parable once to um, a bunch of Pharisees and he the parable goes, I don't know exactly where it is, but the parable goes something like this, is that there was a, a, a man who was given a field or, or a owner was given a field and and he he wanted to plant a vineyard. And he went, and then after planting the vineyard, he went away. And while he was away, he sent his servants to come and collect whatever the vineyard had produced in profits and they, and they killed him. And then so he sent another servant and they killed him. And and then some more and more, and they eventually killed him. And then he sent his son. And when his son arrived and said, "Look, I'm the I'm the master's son," they killed him as well. And the question was given to his Pharisees: So, what should the master do to these people to keep him killing the people that he sent? He said, oh, "No, they, you ought to kill. You ought to kill him." I said, "May that not be so, because this is exactly what you've been doing to." to God. So people who were killed for the word's sake, and people who were actually involved in actually writing or creating the word as it went, the story went. We think about Isaiah. Um, Isaiah, for one, wrote this book where he wrote scriptures in, and and, um, and we know there's a, a lot of really good stuff in there. And he was sworn into right, a horrific death while alive. So, and 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 that is for the word. If you want to say why did he die, it was for the word. And what he was saying at the time was um, 
to test him with mouth. This, he was telling the Israelites, listen, you better turn or, or bad things are going to happen to you. And very many times the Israelites didn't really like what these people were saying. And uh, so they died for the word's sake. So, and as we progress in age, even after, even after the crucifixion of Jesus and Jesus went into heaven, or was was uh, raised into heaven. He, um, um, people, when the church first started off, the church wasn't as we know it is today. Right, you can get up on Sunday and go to church. It wasn't always like that. Um, uh, the, the Catholics ran the church in the first few fifteen hundred years, and they really eventually messed things up so that eventually. Uh, people like Luther came into the scene to listen, but you guys got it all wrong. And and some of those people were were plotted against and were killed when they decided, hey, this is not the way things are supposed to happen. This is what the Word of God says. So they were making a stand for the Word, and they were probably eventually killed for that. And I saw a movie um, a few years ago, and uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but but he, he was the guy that um, started to interpret the Bible into English. It was first in Latin. So the, the, the Catholics were real smart. They got the Bible in a language that no one could read, only priests. And um, then they sold tickets to people <clears throat> who couldn't understand what they were reading. Say, hey, we know what's been said. If you buy this ticket, you'll go to heaven. And, and, and that's basically when so what happened. When the first people came out and said, that's not so... Let's put it into English so that everyone can read, everyone can have access. Those people were killed. They were killed in a terrible way. They were burnt at stakes. I think one of the, the more common executions were, um, were, 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 they were told that you are exceptionally bad. You've actually gone and distorted the word of God. Well, these people have died for the word of God. Right? They've made the ultimate sacrifice. So, thinking about it, the time of the end already started when the first saints when the first saints started being put to death for the word of God and the testimony that they had remember the testimony not always the word of God, is what they had to say about the people, a warning or or, or something that God had maybe told them um, which made them angry, we know that happened, that has happened so many times with the, where they killed the messenger and and uh, and um, and they think, well, if since you kill the messenger, it's okay. That all that'll solve the problem. That's not okay. Right? They cried in a loud voice, which tells me they were really loud and complaining, and they really didn't. They wanted God to hear. I mean, hey, <clears throat> they were right there at the throne. Right? I mean, if the thrones, if John was standing looking at the throne and he can see the altar and the saints in it, they must be close by. Right, so they were speaking to the Lord and saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true. So there was worship in there. Um, I would think so, because some, if you're given, if you died for, for the sake of God or the Word, you probably you probably have your, your ducks in a row. You, you know what you believe, all right? And, uh, and this next statement is quite amazing. And you know, and I've always wrestled with with that, and you know, the fact that the beatitudes, you know, on the mountain when Jesus says, you know, if someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the other, way. and uh, and kind of, and many Christians actually fall for, and you've got to forgive, you've got to forgive, you've got to forgive. Oh, you, 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 and your whole problem is you're not forgiving. These guys have died. They're in heaven. They've made it. Right? They they haven't all worry. But what are they saying? They're saying, Lord, we're here, we're glad we hear everything, here, but we want vengeance. Kind of a kind of a strange statement coming from people that have made the ultimate sacrifice, or went so far to make the ultimate sacrifice, you would say, wow, what a giant of a Christian. He was actually put, 
he was actually put to death for what he believed in and uh, um, martyrdom is, is, is reasonably highly ranked over there in Christian in the Christian world as someone that actually is a super saint more than a saint, right? And yet these super saints are completely forgotten about, about forgiveness. So what are they saying? What they're saying is wrong? Would you would you think that that God really wants us as Christians to be pushovers? To think about the people that killed us back on earth for something silly as the word, spreading the word or working, you know, I mean China have hurting people that are spreading Bibles that get arrested and get killed. And then that's that falls under the same banner. It's whatever is for the word's sake and the testimony of the mouth. That kind of is a blanket cover, you know, if you were involved in that. What's more amazing is how the Lord responds to this. Right, so I would expect the Lord to like him flashes of thunder, you know. Have you guys just lost it all? And God says, um, oh, why am I, I must keep some moving down. Um, the response from heaven is, is first, or the response from God is first to give them robes. For every one of them. Robes for every one of them. No, you've just complained to God about the fact that you were killed a few hundred years ago on earth and you're still ticked about it. And now you're God is God is responding by giving you robes. Quite a quite a strange response from God. Why would why would God be giving them robes? Well we do know robes as far as Christians is that, you know, we're we're the bride of Christ and the white robe is the robe of righteousness. So we have a we we are getting this image of purity and purification and we this, this robe represents the righteousness of Christ without it we obviously would never get to heaven but yet dear God is responding by giving them all white robes this is what he does on rapture day everyone um, saints who arise from the grave that will be dressed will be given white robes we who are left behind will s snap in an instant we will change to a glorified body and we will be clothed in white robes we will represent the righteousness of Christ and so quite a strange time for God to be actually clothing these um, these saints and he said to them and he says to them, just wait, cool it. Um, of course, by you know, paraphrasing, it's coming. It's, it's actually right there. It's right at the door. It's shorter than you think. Just for a small season, you're going to get what you wanted. And... So it looks like God's in the same God's in the same uh, channel as they are. It's like, yeah, what you what you wanting, you're gonna get. I'm gonna see to it. In fact, the reason you probably per you run the altar is so I can personally deal with your issue. Not uh, as I said, every all that astounds me as a Christian, but it's in Revelation and it's true. It's there. We're just reading it. And if we carry on reading, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them. Okay, God never said to them, so I'd probably use a uh, an angel or or a messenger. It was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. So they've been there resting all the time. They haven't really been um, busy doing anything much they were just resting you know, last 1500 years you've been resting and you're still ticked with the people who killed you that far, that long ago as <laughs> it's just a little bit of fun because 
sometimes we as Christians take it very seriously. That this is, this is actually pretty funny to me. And um, you know, maybe if I were in God's position, I would say, "Listen, guys, you need to calm down a bit." You know, um, I'm taking care of it. But probably loosely speaking, this is what God is actually saying to them. And um, robes are given to them, and they should rest for a little season. Encouraging. God says the wait between the fourth seal and the sixth seal is a little season. Because in the sixth seal, the sparks start flying. And uh, the sparks fly in a big way. Right? It has been said that Christians uh, will be will, will be here during the tribulation. Only a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. We we don't see much, right? We just see, we're going to go through that. You'll see. We only see much, but yeah, what's important is God is getting ready for a rapture time, all right? He is already dressing some of the saints that have gone before him and actually died. So it's kind of saying, it's right. You guys are the privilege. You're getting your you're getting your attire first, right? You're getting front row seats to all of this because something is going to be happening real soon and which you guys are going to be part of. And um, and that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren, brethren that should be killed as they were. Well, there are certain people that will be killed, uh, you know, probably during the tribulation, but I don't even think it's these people that probably up to that point is that kind of near the end, just before the rapture, there probably would be people that would be um, killed for the word's sake. And I mean, if we know what the world's going up to is happening every day, really. People who are being tested and Christians who are being tested and and um, and being, you know, innocents being killed by by um, bombs and, and cars that are controlled and attacks. Um, um, I don't want to instigate against any group here, so I'm kind of thinking to choose my words, but um, it's it's happening all the time. But God says there is going to. I'm taking care of every one of you, and but you're getting the robes so long, but there's going to be more added to you, and that should be killed as they were to be fulfilled. Should be fulfilled. Right, so God knows in advance uh, who will die and how they will die, and and what they will die. The causes, the cause, the cause of their their death, will be fall, and uh, so He knows that that's that's going on. It's kind of, you know, wow, you know everything really. You don't even know what people will die for. Uh, so of course He knows when you're going to be dying. All right, so. <sighs> I do not want to go on to the six seal moment because I think this video is long enough already. But um, there's a here is the fifth seal has really been packed with information, as we know that the time of the end has already been has already been rolling forward before the, even the first seal was was broken. For the saints to have been collected under the altar, this was so that. So that when the fifth seal is broken, that these that these saints would be given their white robes, and they would and they would be given information that would be permanent pertinent to us. Um, something is not so direct is that um, we learn from the fourth seal that souls do have a a, a journey, you know, the journey from 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 the father into a body out of the body into hell. And but they also have from the Father to a body and from the body into heaven. Um the souls that are under the altar are clearly souls that were that w were not that were not uh, um destined for hell and for a very good reason. So um if any of you unbelievers are are watching the video, this ought to be Kind of a wake up call is that yeah clearly is in the God is indicating to us is that what will occur if you are if if you do not turn 
to Jesus and have him take care of your sins, have, 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 his, have your sins laid on his shoulders, and that when he died, that he, he died for you as well. Accept that gift. Accept the gift. It is free. It's, it's, it's like if I came to you and I gave you a lot of ticket that's going to win, and you'd say to me, well, we don't, not really interested in it. You know, you might need to have your sanity tested. This is, this is a win-win situation. Uh, if you if you if you give your life to Him, you get your share of the grace that He's poured over His saints. Now we we have we have great advantages living here on earth. We yeah we don't have it any different than and we still have to face every day today. But after this, will we get heaven? And it's not nearly anything like what we're experiencing here. Jesus loves us. Jesus is coming soon. He's going to be here any time. It could happen even tomorrow. But for all those saints that are watching, for this a sudden appearance, it's going to be a little bit different than what we were taught or what we we hope it is. We can have a four, we can have a we can have a curtain raiser. And we will know at that curtain raise that it's now. All right. You will have your time. If you're not if you if you're not born again and you don't know, there won't be time to run around at that time at that curtain raise and say, please help me. Um I what do I do, what do I do. <laughs> no one will be no one will probably will be giving you that advice at the time. And if you do make it, you'll probably just just make it, but you don't want to leave it for that long. But as saints, we we will know when <coughs> our Savior stepped through those clouds and says, "Hey guys, come on in," and you want to be one of those. <coughs> we sing that song when the saints go marching in. That's a rapture song. <coughs> I mean, if anyone thought about it, it's a rapture song when the saints go marching. That's exactly what they're singing about the rapture. Right, you want to be in that number, so do I. And get your life right to the God. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I am not worthy of anything. Lord, I'm not even worthy of your love. But you have made a way for me to get into heaven. And Lord, with my sins, I can't make it there. So I thank you that, Lord, that I receive your gift of eternal life. That blood that was shed, that you shed, your blood, your God blood, I take it I take it for me as well, Lord. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I follow you from now on. And Lord, I'll never leave or forsake you. My allegiance is to you only. I have no other care. Yeah, the world will distract me, but I have really no other care. Say that prayer and mean it in your heart. And God will allow you to get into heaven. That's a carrot. John 3, 16 says, <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, you could say as, as a, a number of people, well, who cares? You know? For us Christians, that's precious. But yes, the, that he who believes in him should not perish by everlasting life that's that is the selling point right you may care not care less about jesus and what he did but the selling point is that if you care less about everlasting life man and the emphasis of being on life right you are going to be everlasting right but if you want to be everlasting none life take your pick everlasting life yeah Living in a mansion, walking along streams of rivers, rolling hills of flowers, plants that talk to you, animals that talk to you. So that's life. Right, so drop the facade. You're, you're not immortal. You know you're not. You know there's an end to you. With Jesus, there's no end. Accept him. Jesus says, 
my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Either you're wearing the earth's yoke or you're wearing his yoke. You're not wearing no yoke. There's no such thing as no one is not serving him. You're either serving God or you're serving the world. If serving the world seems cool to you and you're knowing this this world, especially what we hear in the news today, that this is this is the world that you're happy with. Man, oh, if you have you lowered your standards. You're like looking at the bottom of the barrel and saying, Well, this is good enough for me. Not so. God has got God has got a life and an eternity for you. You know how long eternity is never ends. Have you ever stopped and tried to think about eternity? It it pushes your mind over the edge. Because you cannot even think about it. Because we are so conditioned that everything has the end in this earth. You cannot think about that. You cannot even conceive it. And you get to live. You get rewarded. For the 60, 70 measly years you're here on earth. You, you make the right decision. You get rewarded forever. Man. You know, you... You really... You're really blind if you miss that. <laughs> anyway, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Next video, we'll be speaking about the sixth seal. As I mentioned, the sparks will fly. And this is the part where um, saints will want to know about. All right, the mystery. The mystery part of it. We want to know. Wait, wait. You want to know when the rapture is? Catch the next video. Thank you.